In this video I'm going to be doing the ground upgrade on the Melzi board inside this Monoprice Maker Select 3D printer. It's really simple and only really requires some basic soldering skills. Obviously the first thing you'll need to do is take the bottom off to get access to the board itself. Now normally you'd only have to remove the outermost screws and the panel should just slide off with the power supply attached, but I installed the heat bed MOSFET upgrade and the wires that go from the MOSFET board to the power supply are a little too short, so it makes it kind of difficult for me to get the power supply in and out. As you can see, to get the power supply out completely, I had to remove those wires running to the MOSFET board. I really need to just cut some new wires and install them one day. Now, if your memory is as bad as mine, you'll want to mark any similar connectors so they go back, you know, to the right place easily. So, for things like this, I like to use just cheap nail polish. It's easy to apply, and when you're done, you can just chip it off. It's also a good idea if you're unsure of what you're doing or where things go to take as many pictures as possible beforehand. This will give you a reference when you go to put it back together. So now, just carefully remove each of the plugs from the connectors. And unscrew the Melzi board from the chassis. Okay, so now that we got this on the bench, uh, this is version 3.5, and from what I've read, version 3.5, this issue does not affect. However, I do have some uh, variations. Now, I have to do a PID tune. I have not done that yet, and I've heard that it pretty much solves the problem. Um, also, I may have to wrap the extruder a little bit better um, to insulate it. Or, I'm sorry, the hot end. Um, however, I'm going to show you anyway, um, just because this, you know, it's not going to hurt to upgrade the ground or to add more ground lines. Um, so if you do have an earlier version, uh, this pretty much is going to be exactly the same for you. So from what I understand, the original problem with the earlier re revision boards is that they used an undersized ground plane that uh, was basically set up to have everything daisy-chained off of it. So instead of using a large ground plane for everything to, to be connected to, they used one that was very small. Um, another thing that people or the right way to do it is to run direct ground lines to any high current devices. So there's one pathway running to, let's say, the hot end or to um, the hotbed versus a single, essentially, wire running, and then they're just kind of connecting to the wire. So I found this image on the Internet a while ago, and the person that made this, what they're suggesting is you use the ground from power to this leg here of the MOSFET, and that upgrades the ground to the MOSFET. And that makes sense because this is pulling, the hot end pulls a lot of current, as does the hotbed. Now, I've already upgraded the hotbed um, with an external MOSFET, so I don't need to worry about that. They also illustrate running a line from these three capacitors, which are for the CPU, to the negative of the E temp. And again, that's kind of daisy chaining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these all should be ground, so I'm going to run a bridge across them and a wire that goes down onto the board and connects directly to the power ground. I'm also going to run another wire from the hot end ground to the power ground. Actually, it's going to be the hot end MOSFET to the power ground. And I'm also going to connect the E temp and the bed temp to ground, so it's a lot. Uh, some people may say it's not worth it, but it's not going to hurt anything. I'm not sure where the actual voltage drop is, and I'm not sure where the problem is, and I'm not going to find out with this board because, from what I'm told, this board is not affected. However, the other boards look just like it, and if you have one of those, this is how you do the upgrade. It's not that hard. So before I do anything, I want to test to make sure these are actual ground points on this board before I go shorten something out. So if we... See, these are all connected, and it connects to ground... And all these here connect to ground. So we're good. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to do the hotbed because there's no point uh, to do that. At least in my case because I have an external MOSFET. You can do an external MOSFET for the hot end as well. Um, I just don't have that. All right, so now we go in for the kill. Thank <laughs> you. 
And this is difficult because this is actually halfway across the bench. But normally we'd be doing this a lot closer. But of course somebody will say you're too shaky or you're not doing it right. And I don't care. That's there. I'm not going to solder it just yet because we got more. All right, so this one is going to go to ground as well. It's going to be about there. And let's just make sure we look good on our the size of the wire. And it does because it'll reach it'll just reach it. All right, so let's go ahead and solder that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is, can I zoom in any without going blurry? Eh, it's not too bad. So let's just add a little bit to that. A little bit to that. The sad part is you can see better than me at this point because I'm sitting so far away. Or at least I feel like I am. All right, did I just move? Just want to make sure I didn't move that capacitor. In case anybody is wondering, I'm soldering at about 340 Celsius because um, these are attached to a ground plane. So it's got to be a little bit hotter than normal. All right. So next up is what do we say? The bed temp and the e temp. All right. So this wire here, like I said, I don't see a point to running something so such a low gauge wire to some is going to a thermistor, which is what these connectors are. Um, but I'm going to. I mean, if I don't, I'll have people screaming, "Oh my God, the world's coming to an end." You didn't use the right gauge. And you can never go wrong using a thicker wire, so. We'll do it. It's just a pain in the butt this is to work with. And I'm just going to put a little dab of solder on there. Just to freshen it up a little bit. Yeah, I'm just going to wrap that around a little bit. Thank you. 
I really don't see how this is going to help any, but whatever. Maybe, like I said, I don't have that board. But if you were to do this and you just... heat this up drop a ton of solder on it I hope they stay hope that it's not shorting on anything else oh that looks terrible okay, I'm just pushing this back away from this positive trace so that's the mod I wouldn't recommend this unless you have one of these boards, the older version of these boards, and uh, and don't want to buy a new one, which I don't blame you, especially when you're buying a cheap printer. It's all about, these cheap printers are all about this type of mod. Now, before I um, put this back in the machine, I want to make sure that we haven't shorted anything, and it's always a good idea just to double check that none of these are shorted accidentally. Yeah, see, I'm hit one of the vias there. So that's not shorted. That is, which is good. This is looking good. So far, it seems good. So let's go put it back in the printer and see what happens. I apologize for the low lighting, but I already put it back together. Right, let's see if it turns on. Turns on and Let's turn the bed up too. And it's heating up, so I think we're good to go.